Hello Internet, I'm Guy. I'm standing in front of my little bird bath here that has a little solar fountain on it. <clears throat> the solar fountain is a standard off-the-shelf lily pad fountain that has a circle of, I think, 12 uh, half-volt solar cells wired in series to produce 12 volts. It's got a little pump and a little control module here. So you plop it in the water and it works just great. Now the sun is uh, in the late afternoon right now, so it's not going very high at all. In fact, it's reached this point where it, what happens in the late evening, where if you shade it a little bit like that, the simulating late evening, it does this little pulsing thing. But in a high sun angle like this, which is better for a solar panel to produce more power, then this will shoot up about this high. So <clears throat> this serves two purposes for me. One, it's marking the septic system and the other is purely decorative. Now the pipe from my septic tank goes out behind the camera over there. So I'm basically upgrading the fountain that I put here in the middle of my leach field. This is actually where the distribution box is underneath the ground here that spreads out and spreads the liquid effluent from my septic system out into this leach field here. So I marked this spot with a paver here so that I would know where to dig if I ever need to access that distribution box. So this video is about exploring options to make a better, bigger fountain that has more power throughout the day. And in fact, by the end of this whole experiment, I now have a fountain that will run well into dusk. Whereas you see, this thing is dying off. The fountain I have over there behind you that I've just finished installing, and you'll see the whole process of how I got there in this video, works beautifully. I'm really pleased with it. So uh, I'm gonna start off by showing you how I designed a tracking system for the solar panel. There's a solar panel about this big that if I just left it at a fixed angle optimized for average sun height, um, you know, I'd have low fountain height, high fountain height, low fountain height, depending on time of day. So I designed a tracking system for that panel to move the panel so it faces the sun as the sun comes around. I'm going to start by showing you how I built that and then you'll see all the experiments that I went through to get what I wanted out of this and I'm pretty pleased how it came out. So stick with me. I designed this solar tracking circuit board for another client and I decided to apply it to this project. So it's all done with surface mount components that I haven't assembled onto here yet. And then on the back here is where the photo cells will be. So uh, the way this works is there will be a little X bridge here and a dome over these photo cells to protect them from weather. And if the sunlight were to move off this way, then these little uh, baffles here would shade this photo cell and cause the whole thing to drive the motors to move it to point directly at the sun. That's the basic principle of it here. My assembly technique starts with a flux pen here, which I'm going to use to put a little trace of flux down there. That will help the solder to flow on to these pads right here. Then I'm going to bring in the soldering iron and I'm going to put little drops of solder just right there onto each little pad, just a small amount. That'll allow me to bring in each part and uh, tag it down on this side and then I'll come in and solder down the other side. Once I've completed the uh, soldering process, then I will just check off each one here with a highlighter. So I've identified four resistors that are 100K values here. I've got them all pulled out from my storage bins here, which you can see here that I have hundreds of them. So my next step is to pick each one up with a micro tweezer. And let's see, I'm going to go to R7 first. I'm going to put this one down right there and just tag it just enough to melt it down. So that's those four now assembled to the board. So I'll go through with my highlighter and highlight all of these so I know where I've been here and which ones I've done. And that's how it goes. So here's the schematic for your reference. You can always pause this and copy it if you want to. And the assembled board on the back and assembled on the front showing the photo cells installed. So I've also coated the whole electronics, all of it, with a conformal coating. So this is this stuff called uh, Tech Spray Turbo Coat. And what it does is it puts a complete cover on all of the exposed electronic parts to protect it from weather. Now obviously I masked off the parts that I need to connect to here so that those are not covered in insulating materials. I need to make a clear hemispherical cover for the four photo cells on the sun tracking board. Here's the other side of it. Um, so this little dome here will cover the photocells and then there'll be dividers in here that will separate them to 
cause a shadow. If the sun moves off to one side, one side will get shadowed and that will cause it to motorize up to the corrected direction. So I'm going to use a piece of one inch Delrin and make a mold that I can then vacuum form a dome onto the, uh, some clear acrylic and that will then sit on here. Having solved this problem of having a dome over the top side, I realized I need to cover the back. So I made a little lump on here that I can mold over to cover the whole back. And then possibly I can seal this all the way around the edge and create a complete plastic enclosure for the circuit board. Well, that came out really well. Look at how this will fit in there now. So the electronics are covered up there. This is the screw terminals where the wires will go in. So I'll make little holes and right in here for the wire to enter there. But then this should be able to fit right on top of this. And then that will seal the whole thing in there just like that. Right. One of the advantages of living in the country is I have access to a store called Tractor Supply that sells mostly products for farmers. Hence the feed bin here, and this is what I'm going to use for my water feature fountain here. Um, I decided I didn't like the look of this, so I'm going to spray it with a green spray paint. So I'm going to get started on that right now. Okay, that looks great. It's all green on the outside, and I went green down, oh, what I consider below the water line. While this is filling up, I just wanted to show you the tiny little pump that I'm going to be using and the solar panel. I believe this is about a 5 watt solar panel. It's actually a flexible one that I mounted onto a piece of aluminum here. You can see a little red light here showing that it's actually producing power. And so ultimately I'm going to take this little pump, get it wet and stick it onto that piece of acrylic that I mounted onto the top of this brick here. And then run this over here and when I'm ready to I can just connect these two wires. I've got to get the water level up a little higher first. So we'll give that a moment. Oh, and the sun just came out. How about that? Okay, let's plug it in. And I'm going to point that right at the sun, pretty much. Oh yeah, that's what I had in mind. That's a great little fountain. Look at that. That's about a 12 inch rise there. I think I can shut off this garden hose now. And uh, eventually, the tracking system will sit here and optimize the power to this solar panel and keep it at its optimal uh, fountain height. So in my test, I mounted this tiny little pump onto a brick that I had glued a piece of acrylic to so the little rubber suction feet could stick to it. And then I realized that wasn't going to work because then the fluid level could go above or below the pump and impair the flow coming out of the top here. So I've decided to get some one inch foam and cut a circle and make a giant lily pad here. So the idea now is that this will then track the water level. Okay, so this is upside down. Having added these one inch blocks here, this now puts the inlet for the pump below the water level here. Well, Mission Control, we have a problem. It's late morning and the solar panel still hasn't spun around to point to the eastern uh, sunrise. 
So I realize what's going on here is that the pump is trying to get powered from this solar panel, but it's basically in the shade. So it doesn't have enough power to provide power to the two motors in the tracking system here. So if I disconnect the pump, look what happens. It's doing exactly what it should do. It's going to go seek the sun, point directly at it. See how it's adjusting? And there it is, pointing essentially at, directly at the sun. It's a little bit off calibration. So now if I just plug this in again, we're good. So what's the solution here? Well, I think I need to have a battery in the system, and I didn't think I would. So I need a battery as a buffer to have enough power to run all of the systems here, the pump and the motors. So uh, let's see how that works out. I started out thinking I could just add a battery to my existing system, and then I found this very affordable system that includes its own battery built into the solar panel. So I'll link to this below. I've mounted the uh, weather protected control board to the back of this new solar panel that has the battery in the back. So let me show you the other side here. So this is sealed all the way around here now. So this is weatherproof except at the open end here where the wires can come out. So uh, hopefully rain will just shed off of here and maybe drain out of here, I don't know. So final assembly complete. This is the power cable that goes out to the pump. So it has a little sealed uh, gasketed connector there that came with the original system. Obviously the power comes out of the solar panel and the battery here and feeds right up into the system, the control system. And then there's a wire coming out here to move the vertical motor and another wire that dodges around here and over there to move the horizontal or um, azimuth motor. So let's take it outside and see if it's going to work. Well, it looks like the whole thing works. It's got enough power to run the pumps and the fountain. And you can see some sun just came out right now, and it's hunting to try and find the sun. What's interesting is, because there's some very bright clouds over here, it's actually trying to point that way, whereas the sun is over here. It's actually pointing directly at the brightest part of the sky to optimize its performance. So that's what this little sensor's job is. And if I shade it, haha, <laughs> yes, you can see that uh, I'm cheating it, and now it's going to go hunt again and find the brightest piece of sky that it can find. So I'm pretty tickled with the way this whole thing came out. You can see that the solar panel will track to the brightest part of the sky. What has happened right now at this moment is the trees are over there, the sun has gone behind the trees, and the brightest part of the sky is now over here, and it's trying to find it. In fact, it thinks it's right above my head, apparently. Um, but there's some storm clouds blowing o over there, so that suddenly changed the whole balance of light. So the solar panel wants to now track to the brightest part of the sky, not necessarily pointing directly at the sun. What that does is it optimizes the amount of power going into the little battery on the back of the solar panel. Now the battery is largely powering the fountain right now. There's just not enough sunlight to run that. Um, there might be, it might come down just a few inches. But uh, as the sun goes down, the battery in here will get drawn down to keep the fountain going at a fairly good height, way into dusk. It's really impressive how that small battery built onto this solar panel will work. So I'm overall, I'm pretty pleased with this. I think I've got a little bit more tweaking. I've been calibrating the sensor on here, as you can see. Uh, now it's going to have another hunt and see where it goes to find the brightest part of the sky, which is, it's a dynamic situation. So it's always going to try and find the part that it thinks is optimal. What I did to calibrate the sensor is I put a couple of pieces of wide black tape over the dome to widen the shadows that fall on the sensors to give it a better tracking. Wow, it's having a nice dance right now. So basically the sky is fairly homogenous right now. There's not a lot of really good bright spots. So it tends to default to the east so it knows where to catch the morning sun. And that's one of the features I kind of designed into the system. So here we are. I'm fairly pleased. Uh, water level's a little down. I'm going to top it up later, but uh, I'm happy with this. It's been a fun adventure, and I'm, I'm really pleased with how the whole thing came out. So it's late evening now, and the pump is finally shut off because it's drained the battery down that's hiding inside the solar panel. So uh, one thing I wanted to point out is I used little wire ties in here to keep it centered in the middle of the tank here. Otherwise, the overspray would just come shooting right off the edge, and I'd end up draining out the whole tank. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning, where this thing will catch the morning sun, since it's already oriented towards the east over here. It'll pick up the morning sun, tilt over to find the sun, and keep going. 
Here's one of my early tests and it was a perfectly sunny day and of course I had the big lily pad and the non-battery powered solar panel. It just barely had enough power to run the motors and the pump in full sun. The moment I had a slightly overcast day it would prioritize the pump and the motors would just stall out and stop moving. And in fact it stalled right there for a while as you can see it's not moving and then suddenly it catches up. So I learned a lot doing this and it's been very interesting. If you've enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe and you can support me on Patreon.